Welcome, friends and fans, to the GalaxyCon Live Rocky Horror Science Fiction Double Feature Virtual Q&A, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are indeed taking the time work and going back to the planet transsexual with four amazingly talented guests from the original theatrical feature film, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. So without further ado, let's all take a jump to the left, hot patootie, bless our souls, and bring them out. Our first guest is an actress whose credits include I, Claudius, Doctor Who, and the incredibly undervalued Hawk the Slayer. Today, she joins us to talk about her role as Magenta. Please welcome back the always entertaining Patricia Quinn. Hello. Hello. I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> you always do, my dear. You I always do. do. <laughs> oh, Pat, how have you been? Okie dokie. Oh, don't ask. I'm so happy to be here. This is like going out. It's like going to a party. I've forgotten how to put on my lipstick. Oh, well, you look, look, you look lovely as always. Where's your heart? Oh, yes, indeed, indeed. So hope the new year is treating you well. Mm, it will do, I hope. <laughs> I I think, I absolutely think I so. Know. I won't be depressing, honestly. No, no, uh, we're uh, off to a rough start, yeah, but I, th I think the year is going to get better because it has to. Has to, darling. <laughs> Yeah. It absolutely has to. And speaking of things getting better, our next guest is a Tony and Golden Globe winning actor whose credits include the original cast production of Greased, La Planet Fantastique, known in the United States as Fantastic Planet, Megaforce, Spin City, and today he's here to talk about the eternally bewildered Brad Majors. Please welcome back our friend, Barry Boswick. Right. Hey! hey. 40, 45 years later, and we finally see each other. <laughs> You look so beautiful, Patricia. You're very kind. You look. Oh wonderful. no, I'm not. It's the truth. Bless your heart. Thank you. Okay. Mm. All right. And and Patty, you look the same. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you 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 look a little hairier, but uh, you know. I like, am uh, hairier. I am hairier. <laughs> you know. But as you said, you just you just filmed something that uh, that you you look the part. You just played. I play, yeah, I played a hippie with a heart attack. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I did. So, uh, otherwise, how, how's the new year been treating you so far, boss? Uh, I, I just got back from Hawaii. How bad is that? Uh, and there was hardly anybody at the airport, and so that was even better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Barry, always a pleasure to have you here, boss. And thank you. Uh, it's 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 always great to see you, especially in good spirits and in good health. Yeah, thank you. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. And our next guest, she is an actress and singer whose credits include The Killing Fields, Great Expectations, and Rock Follies. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Columbia. Please welcome back the always lovely Nell Campbell. Ah. Ooh, darlings, am I on? Am I on? Hello, sure. <laughs> All the way from Sydney, Little Australia. What do you think? I joined the Navy to see, to see the, world. the world. And what did I see? Like me. Me. I saw the sea. Yes, I saw the yes. Atlantic and the Pacific and the Pacific wasn't terrific and the Atlantic wasn't what it turned out to be. Ah, hello, treasures. Hello. Hello. Queen, looking sensational. And you're looking so alike, and I love that. You look sensational, Barry. You look shocking, treasure. Oh. Is there been a hurricane where you are? Look at you. What the hell happened? What? what? Hmm? Well, you've got a great head of hair. Thank you. I, I'd like to be like this all the time. I think you look great. Well, he exactly. does look great. And I think you look very envious of your head of hair, actually. Oh, it's a fabulous head of hair. Mm, absolutely. Then <laughs> those blue eyes. Huh. Oh, and Looking fine, looking fine, and loving the cloth. Well, th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, half a gallon of hairspray, and you know, trying to cover up my oh. bald, trying to cover up my middle aged bald patch. But uh, no, no, not, we, I, no, nobody, I, I can't age as beautifully as Barry, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. Mine has a little wet, by the way, treasures. If you thought there was something amiss, well, you're always <laughs> in the sea, darling. What, Trey? You're always in the sea. That's true. Swimming, it's swimming. That's why, I work, that's why I've got my nautical attire. Well, kind of blue, blue no, no, shorts, yeah. Nautical, naughty, or otherwise, Nell, is absolute pleasure to have you back. I'm glad <laughs> the New Year is treating you well, and it's always glad, great to see you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And people... 
Absolutely. And people, it is always great to see. Our final guest is an internationally renowned musical artist and actor whose body of work includes Ghost Wars, Americathon, Fight Club, and of course, several albums, including the diamond-selling Bat Out of Hell. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Eddie, the ex-delivery boy. Please welcome back Meatloaf. Yay! Oh, I suddenly saw an empty screen. I thought, where have I gone? Never mind. <laughs> that showed my age, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, uh, look, Barry, see, I grew a beard too. Well, oh, and it looks good, good on you. It looks I great. I never could do that before, and suddenly I have a beard. I don't have know. Have you just grown doing. up? What? Have you just grown up? I guess. No, I haven't grown up. I'm not going to grow up. Never grow well, up. Of course not. But I mean, with, before you couldn't grow a beard. Was that because you were too young? I don't know. I don't know. I have, so have. Like, unlike Elizabeth Warren, I do have like one thousandth of percent Native American because my great great grandmother, no, my great 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 grandfather was married to an Apache in Texas. Oh, wow. Oh, and I'm covered in feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Meet, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I'm, I don't. I'm so busy, and I don't know why. It's ridiculous. I've had six surgeries oh, wow. since September. Oh, shit. I, I broke my arm and had to have that surgery. Others were elective, and they did them all. Like on my hand to get this Dupriance thing, and then all the nerve, and, and yeah. it's a long thing. And COVID did something to my teeth, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, gracious. Gracious, but I'm so glad to have you here. I so enjoyed our conversation a few weeks ago, and I'm so glad to have you back with the rest of your castmates from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And once again, gentlemen and ladies, thank yes, you for joining us all here today. She's got her breakfast. No, did we interrupt breakfast here? <laughs> Sorry, God, I have to have another cup of tea. Oh, that's quite all right. It's quite all right. It's gone too, I want to right? show you something, how I make an individual cup of tea with fresh leaves. I use and this. And it's gone, right? No, nothing to Ooh. eat yet. That'll be after oh, we've okay. had our chat. See, so I put more to that. Great, by you. the way, what Trish? <laughs> I no, told no. Barry, I he looks great. I love that look. Thank you. And the you sexy too. mountain man. I love that look. He'd be with a heart attack. He'd be with a heart. I want my hair to look like that, but it won't. So then I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, mate. I just yeah, he's. I'm just completely like jealous. That's okay. okay. Enough about me. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's two sex gods on this on this screen today. So there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, again, gentlemen and lady, once again, and thank you for joining us. Goddesses. Sorry, God. What's that? No, it's all right. And two goddesses. Two, two sexy sex goddesses. goddesses. Okay. So anyway, I got a question for Nell before we move on. Was sure. that Pirates of Penzance you were singing when you came on? No. No. What was it? Um, I think it's it's I'm not the baby to see the not world. The boyfriend, yeah. It, it, it's I don't think it's the boyfriend. Baby, you see the world, we'll see you. See, see. It, wait there, dames at sea. Oh yeah, I think it's dames at sea. But you Have know, you done pirates of Nothing to do with pirates of Penzance. No. Did you ever? Did you ever do pirates uh, meet? They, I saw they, 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 they were, Joe Papp was trying to do everything in the world to get me to play. Um, there was a modern of a modern nature generalist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, That's wonderful. But, but Bad Out of Hell I just it. came out. Oh. oh it didn't so, quite go with that. Did it? I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do that. I would have done it if it wasn't for Bat. Mm, indeed, indeed. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team right now is going through the chat room to pull out the questions for us. In the meantime, for our audience, I just want to uh, throw this out at you. Just what's been just been the best thing of being a part of the Rocky Horror film? What's 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 been uh, if you could just sum it all up? Uh, how would you meeting up with you, Patty? The people that you, the people that you have met. And the people that you did the movie with. Yes, completely agree. I'd say I'd say it's the it's the 
shadow casts around the world that I've met, the, the kids who are in the shadow casts, I, I think they're extraordinary. And I've met people that I probably never would have met in my life because it wasn't my world or it's not my world. And, uh, uh, and I, I know we've all become so connected with them in one way or another, you know, and, uh, uh, they've they've taught me an awful lot about uh, acceptance, I think, and uh, um, being brave. And uh, I, I just think they're a wonderful group. And that's 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 what I, I take away from it all. There you go. I like yeah, that. The fans. Yeah. Point of view. I never. I don't. I never. I never. I don't know that point of view. Oh, because you know. Oh, all, I adore Rocky Horror fans. I, they're just yes, glorious. I mean, oh, yeah. the horror show fans, yeah, that, we, we all owe a debt, a huge debt of gratitude to all the Rocky Horror Show fans. Yeah, absolutely. And we, can, we honestly can never repay it. Well, it's the thing possible. is, they only, do, they only, do this every Friday me, night. Hold up, hold up, Pat. Let's meet up with you. The only way we can ever repay it is to give the best we can when the opportunity arises. Yep. Pat, go ahead. I was just saying that uh, Rocky Horrors are, you know, fed up because they can't meet up and everything. And I was getting ready for this. And I thought, I feel as if I'm going to a Friday night Rocky Horror night. Do you know what I mean? See what I'm going to do again. And I suddenly thought, yeah, I'm missing it too. <laughs> mm. Well, I certainly miss hanging out with you chaps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, you know, what I want all the fans to know, and of course a lot of them aren't listening, but we never, ever tire of hearing your incredible stories of how much right. the film affected you and helped you when you saw it, when you live in these tiny towns that are, you know, racist and sexist mm -hmm. and conservative, Bible bashing. <laughs> You know, that the, that the film helped liberate you. And, and, and that's just the greatest story ever. And we never, ever tire of hearing it. I love hearing every single person's, person's story. It's true. Absolutely. Well, and I study the Bible, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Rocky Horror. Or no, no, that's all the Bible bashers are not, they're bashing on about other things. Like, well, do not yeah. your next wife. We're going to argue that we're going to argue this one forever now. So we should <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I, I think the main thing is that uh, for, for me, certainly, first of all, I, what I think uh, fascinating about Rocky Horror, the, the film, is yeah, its influence and how many people I met when I became a professional actor who it wasn't Shakespeare, it wasn't traditional musicals, they got in <laughs> through watching a shadow cast of Rocky Horror and that when in, in high school and that was like, oh, th theater is not what I think it is. Theater can be this and the, mm -hmm. and the forms of the shadow cast. And that's, that, that, that's been a tremendous inspiration uh, either as former for some people or just as uh, perhaps a new way of perceiving life and lifestyles for others. The and possibilities are endless. Excellent. So, absolutely. And, and, and again, this, uh, this, this, this legacy, will continue to go on. And what I what I love about Rocky Horror is that it's it's like Shakespeare in the uh, literally a sense of you have this core story and so many people have taken it so many unique and fascinating directions. And you never see it never see the same shadow cast twice. Everybody's got their own remarkable imprint on it. Let's toast Richard O'Brien. Here's to Richard oh. O'Brien, the author. Yeah. Where, where is yeah. Richard? Has he just gone away? In New Zealand, and he just sent me, uh, the Guardian has just listed the 15 best uh, Frankenstein movies. And we should have been number two following the original 1931 Frankenstein, followed by Edward Scissorhands, I think. But we were about number 12. Anyway, check it out on the Guardian website, the list of the best Frankenstein films. Hmm. We're not high enough up there, but um, there's a great photograph of Tim, which I don't think I've ever seen before. The Guardian website. It'll be the UK Guardian. So Richard as well? Yeah, I think he's loving being in New Zealand. Okay. What a gorgeous you, wife. You're in Sydney, correct? I'm in Sydney. So near and yet so very, very far. 
from New Zealand. <laughs> it is. So, uh, so Meet, uh, uh, you play the role in Los Angeles on stage, and that got you onto the film, but just as Eddie, but you played the dual role in, yeah, uh, in well, The Library. Yeah. In, the, in, in the script, I believe, in the UK, did not the same person that played Eddie play Dr. Scott on the stage? Yes. Yeah. So, and, and I was so excited about playing Eddie and I got to the set and was watching rehearsal and I turned to the director, Jim Sharman, and I said to him, not taking anything away from Jonathan, who is a wonderful actor and did a good job. I said to him, it's a mistake not having me as Dr. Scott. And he went, oh, no, we're fine. When we came back to actually shoot Eddie, he told me I was right. There was, there's a reason. And the reason is the urgency that Dr. Scott needs to have about finding Eddie. And that, and about what happens on that floor in the lab. The, there's a, it, it's a different play. It would be a different play in that film. Um, well, it started out because they couldn't afford another actor. Yes, right. <laughs> and the thing is, I've never. They could, have pay, they could have paid me what they got for Eddie. I would have done Dr. Scott, not a problem. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you how that originated. Right, Pat? Yeah. Oh, that's why? They had to double up. Yeah, the, oh, I, the thought, we, I thought Richard O'Brien was just a genius. We were getting 18. <laughs> oh, sadly not. I thought Richard was a genius. Yeah, yeah. Darling, the script was being written overnight while we were coming and going, you know. It was very casual. And I, I think we've all, I think well, at some point we've all been in, in, in roles and doing multiple characters and that frantic costume change on the sidelines. But it was so, I mean, you know, Dr. Scott's mustache was painted on with an eyebrow pencil. So that, uh, yeah, in the play, in the play. <laughs> play, yeah, yeah, sure. That's, so that's the scope, but it was Tim Curry that, I mean, I had acting lessons and done Shakespeare already when we did Shakespeare. I mean, when we wow. did more. But, and you always hear about being in the moment, being in the moment, and you always think you're in the moment. Well, it was Tim that taught me was. Forget all that shit. On the third show, he said the line, well, Dr. Scott, we need it last completely different than he did in rehearsals or the first two shows. And if I'd have said my line the way it was, I would have looked like a moron. And that taught me to be in the moment. Yeah. So thank you, Tim Curry. You went from in the moment to in the ice box. after his moment. The cruelty of life. <laughs> Nell, you just gave us the promo clip for this panel. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we are good to go on our audience questions. So what do you say we switch on over to them? And our first one comes from Jocelyn, and she wants to know, what is everyone's favorite song from the film? Hoppa Duty. <laughs> I, I'm going home. The, the, the song that Tim sings at the end, right? on the edge of the stage that's yeah, i'm I going to choose yeah it's wonderful i just think that i just thought he was so brilliant in that uh uh the the, the uh, feelings were so ambiguous you you just didn't you you felt sorry for him and you but but you know he was evil you know and uh i just thought he was he brought such depth to that and it's i think it's a really good song i think as i'm I, i'm saying this based on the song on its own, like taking it out of the show. I would say science fiction would be my favorite song. That's wonderful, that song. Yeah, it's got a beautiful yeah. melody, the lyric, it's a great song. But I mean, it's one of the many things that people forget, or don't, no, no, that's not true, they don't forget, but definitely contributing to the film never, never even resting, let alone dying. Um, is that every song is great. There's not a dud song in it. Well, there was one dud <laughs> song. <laughs> no, there wasn't. The one that was cut to me. And which yeah. one was that? It wasn't a dud. It was because of the timing. No, that wasn't dud, and you did it beautifully. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a copy of that <laughs> somewhere? Could you just give me a little bit of it, please? Once Sorry. in a while, a she don't want to. Stop. Yeah. It was a song cut from the film? Yeah, Barry's yeah. song. Yeah, once in a while. Barry's yeah. Solo. Listen, this is it. After I got nailed by Tim. Once in a while, she don't, <laughs> she don't want to call you. Speaking on the telephone. And once in your life, yeah, no, she no, don't no, want to no, know no. you. I don't you look know. around. Have we used up 45 minutes yet? No, no, mm -hmm. no. We got to. Okay. <laughs> well, I, 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 it was just, you know, it, it didn't fit in at that time in the filming. I, I would agree with that. I think that's, I mean, that's definitely what happened. I, no, I, I agree with you. It was just the right song at the wrong place. Yeah. Well, it was the wrong song at the right place. I don't know. Yeah, I think One of the two. I, 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 Did I, they yeah. sing the show in 73? Do you remember now? What, darling? What? Did they sing that song in 73? No. Yeah, me, you're getting a little pixelated. Yeah, no. What, what do you mean, in the, in the play? In mm -hmm. the, yeah, they sang it. He sang it. Not in London. I don't remember it in the play. You don't? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Sorry. Hmm. Very strange. I do not remember that song in the play. So. But can I just throw into that mix when Tim Curry starred in da -da -da -da, Eric Idle's musical on Broadway, directed by Mike Nichols? Yeah. Oh, Spamalot? Mm -hmm. Spam a lot, thank you. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. In the rehearsals, just toward the very, as they were getting very close to the end of rehearsals and opening, Mike Nichols cut his favourite song from the show. Mm -hmm. He told me that when I went backstage. Just That's just an, it's called Murder Your Darlings. You know, so the show worked better without that song in it. Oh. Sometimes you, you have a great song that just doesn't yeah. match the tempo of of the production, you know. Yeah. Which is why Hot Patootie is one of my favorites because I think it gooses the movie right at a really good point. You know, when it comes on in, it's the tour de force and Tim plays yeah. it so wonderfully being all sneery. It's like stealing his thunder and 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 Nell, where you just 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 went and does, ah, my boyfriend's back. So that, that just works. Thank and you. I also have I also have a soft spot for science fiction because as as an old geek, I find myself having to explain those movies to the younger generation. Well, Michael Rennie was in a film called The Day the Earth Stood Still. It was a science fiction classic. And, yeah. <laughs> and oh, the, and Day of the Triffids. Well, that's uh, where everybody goes blind. Yeah, it's like that. So, but Jocelyn, thank you. That was a wonderful question. And <laughs> and me, if you, it's up to you. If you want to. Be all pixelated, like fine too. If you want, sometimes if you if you log out, log yeah, back in again. It's the internet. I, it's the internet. Okay, all right, fair That's enough. So, thing. yeah. So, okay, here's you one. Know, let me say one thing. You know, if science fiction in the wrong hands, it just gets laborious. It's too long and flat. But in the right hands, uh, like when Pat does it, it 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 has it has some shape to it. But where we 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 just they just did a. Uh, uh, fundraiser right for the democratic party and they did the live uh reading of the rocky horror yeah. picture show and uh the when they opened when they op when they opened it with that song the the woman who played the piano and did it it was endless it just was endless it just didn't it just didn't kick the evening off at all uh it actually just slowed the whole thing down um so I guess that that's my only problem with well, that song. On that note, I would like to add, yeah, because I remember going to a Prince concert and he mm -hmm. opened with one of my favorite songs of his, but it's a really slow song, a very curious uh, way to open a show. The great thing when we did the show originally, and it was Pat's song, Pat was selling ice creams and everyone yeah. thought he was the ice cream seller. And suddenly the lights went dark and a spotlight came up on Pat and she started singing that song in her melancholic voice. And it was absolutely fantastic. That was a magical opening of the show. Well, that, was, that was the opening of the show. That was the opening of the show in LA and on Broadway. Yeah. I know, but I'm, I'm just explaining because so many people have seen it. 
just the movie. They don't realize yeah, the movie it's the lips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, understand. I completely understand. And I'm sorry, I'm pixelating. This internet has been giving us grief for the last yeah. week. Yeah. And, 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 you look like a Francis Bacon painting. Well, that yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all down for that. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> that's that's not that right. So, so we have a question on the table from Robin, and they would like to know who were some of your mentors. Hmm. Well, I had one in New York when I was doing stage right out of NYU, and his name was Ellis Rabb, and he was a director, uh, an actor, and he ran the um, uh, a repertory company on Broadway. Um, and uh, he sort of took me under his wing and uh, sort of introduced me to the theater world in New York in the late 60s. And uh, That's called I, what's that? It's called That's what? Called grooming. Oh, what? I still didn't hear it. No, I <laughs> That's called grooming. Oh, grooming, yes, I was groomed. We wouldn't drink and speak at the same time. We'd understand. Yeah, yeah. My so, mentor, my mentor was a gentleman by the name of Joseph Pack. And yep. he took me under his wing in New York. I was the 13th person in the history of the public theater to be on salary full time. And he, he put me in table readings with Pacino. He said, you don't, you've got one line, just say it. And I sit there and listened and he put me in Shakespeare. He was he was so my he told, me, he, he told me I was capable of doing anything that I wanted in the world of uh, in artistic world. I think it was right. Pat, go ahead. So I just uh, trying to remember Joe Pat, suddenly that name I know. And uh, what company did he have? The Public Theater. He ran the New York Shakespeare Festival. He ran Lincoln Center. He ran uh, okay. Public Theater. Um, he produced Chorus Line. He produced, I can't even go, I, it's endless. Yeah. The man was, was theater in New York. Mm -hmm. I know, but I was going back to the days of the living theater coming here, but of course that wasn't him. Who, who ran that? Oh, okay. was he called Charles something? Who? Was he Charles? I, I'm sorry, I don't really know. No, I do, I do know his name, but I can't think of it. But he was he was like, I was at drama school at the time, and it, he was like, we were amazed by the living theatre. They were at the Round House in London, here in Primrose Hill. And um, we went to their shows, and we went back to school the next day thinking, wow, now we've seen it. You know, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. nice. we watched them. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, I suppose for me, it was when I had hepatitis very badly, I aged 10, misdiagnosed, and they removed my appendix, which oh, yes, made, made me extremely ill. But the great side effect of it all was three months at home with my mother, because well, I'm one of four children, so I had my mother to myself, and I'd watch the midday movie and every day. And um, that's when you know, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Ruby Keeler, all of those folk were doing the musicals, Busby Barkley shows, etc. Alice Faye. Um, and that's what got me going. Anyway, I hope I'm not boring you all to death. No. Let me say one more. Th let me say one more thing. Um, when I was a kid, we used to eat our, our dinner, uh, you know, in front of TV dinners and stuff in front of TV. And the Ed Sullivan show to me was so important because I saw a little bit of every type of show business in it. You had opera, you had puppets, you had, um, you know, comedians, you had everybody. And I thought the Ed Sullivan show was very, very uh, important uh, to me as a kid to see, you know, what entertainment yeah. was about. You had, Elvis, you had the Beatles. Yep. You had yep. Elvis Presley from the waist up. Yep. <laughs> the Doris Carlin indeed. Robin, thank you. It was a great question. What we have next from Louise. What did your family think when they saw you in the movie? Oh, yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll say this too. You can also, uh, if you have an interesting story about the, if you were in one of the theatrical versions. I, 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 I had no family. I have no, I don't have a brother, sisters, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, aunts, uncles. I am by myself. 
with me. Did, did, did you have some uh, friends who came out and saw it that, uh, hey, come and see this new thing I'm doing to, just, to get a reaction just, from them? Just Jim Steinman and Ellen Foley and myself went to, we were doing the National Lampoon Show in Philadelphia, and we went to the four o'clock, five o'clock showing, and we're the only three people in the theater. And wow. and I hadn't I didn't know what to think because it was very different than the play. Yeah, that is for sure. What did they think? Well, then hang on, hang on. But it became interesting because when it opened at the Waverly in New York, we were on Broadway with Tim. And so Tim asked me to go with him and his friend from England down to the Waverly. And when I got there, I went to the, the ticket booth and they said they were sold out. And I said, well, hang on. You see the gentleman I'm with? He is uh, Tim Curry. He is Frankfurt, the star of the film. And I, I, I play Eddie in the movie. You think we can get in? And she went and left. She goes, okay, you can get in. Well, Tim and his friend went in and sat down. I sit next to him. The manager of the theater walked by me and said, you better be who you say you are. Or you're in there. <laughs> I hope you gave him a few notes from your song. <laughs> took, you know, took the roof off the joint. Great story. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, who's got another one? Either friends or family's reaction. <laughs> Well, I thought it was wonderful. I mean, my son, um, he was, I, I wanted my grandson to come and see me at the Royal Albert Hall because we were doing 40 years of Rocky Horror and one was presenting it. So I wanted Charlie, uh, my grandson, to come and see his grandmama to be at the Albert Hall. I mean, I'm, you know, his granny standing on the stage pre mm -hmm. presenting a film. You're at so, Royal Albert Hall, they should come. Well, the point is that Quinn said, uh, no, my son said, uh, no, mother, you know, because there's a 13 year old thingy on it now or something. And I said, what the are you talking about, Quinn? You were on the set when you were five. You know, how dare he? And he wouldn't, he didn't bring Charlie. I was furious. And anyway, Charlie, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And Charlie then said to me a while later, he said to me, Pat, I said, yeah. He said, I've seen it. I said, sorry? Charlie. He said, That is so funny. <laughs> so funny. Patty, you should mute, Patty, you should mute me for a second because I'm going to call my wife and I'm going to be extremely loud. No I, problem. I, uh, I, 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 uh, don't blame her. No problem. Uh, okay, just mute me. Okay, if you want, when you want to come back on, just was there a wave your arms around or give us a thumbs up and we'll turn you back on. Okay, those those will work too. <laughs> Nell, oh Nell, we have a new we have a new panelist. What's that one's name? This was Tulula. Oh, hello Tulula. Thanks for having She's not so keen on me picking her up. But um, you know, I have to force it on her sometimes. No, oh, it is. So now, what? Uh, do you have any friends or family reactions from uh, when they they saw the film? Oh, they were absolutely thrilled to see me on the big screen, as you can imagine. No, they were just <laughs> absolutely proud as punch. So I think proud's the wrong word. I out and proud is good, but they were just thrilled. I got a gig up there, sequins, tap dancing. And unshockable parents, really. So there was nothing. I think seeing me in Jubilee, well, I, I was with them when they saw me in Jubilee. I had a hat and I suddenly threw it in the air at some moment when I was in bed with Adam and a bit of a distraction. When is in Jubilee? Pardon? My son, my son is in Jubilee. Is he? Yeah. Who, who does he play? Boy. Sorry? Who does he play? He plays a little boy who finds a, a kind of stone or something, a precious stone at the end or something. Oh. It's Quinn. Yeah. How did you find his father, Don Hawkins, that was the producer, one of the producers on Jubilee. Mm -hmm. There you go. Barry. 
What was that? Uh, my kids, who were teenagers at the time, hadn't seen it, but all of their friends had seen it. And so finally their friends took them and uh to see it and uh, they have never talked to me about it (laughs) (laughs) i actually thinking about that i i didn't have anyone who saw it yeah i I mean i didn't see it with you me i don't know if my mother ever saw it i don't know when it came to belfast i mean there's a massive rocky horror following in northern ireland you know because it goes to the opera house that stage show and everything but I'm looking back at the time. I mean, I went. And I saw the film with you in Leicester Square. Do you remember? Yeah. The I, by the way, I didn't see it with my parents. They would have seen it in Australia, and I was in London at the time. Yeah, nobody mentioned it at mm. the time. I mean, come on, it was a sleeper for two years, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, it's 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 lived on. So, Louise, thank you. Great question. What's next? Here's one from Samantha. What is hey? I I don't know it's happened. I don't know if this is any better. It's worse. Well, it we, well, we can hear you. That's the important thing. Yeah, you you're coming. Okay, that's yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's better. A bit better. All right. Uh, I think it's worse. I think you're right. Okay. No, no. I'm going away again. Sorry, guys. Don't worry, darling. No, no, no worries, boss. I mean, we we can hear you as long as you hear us. Uh, I th- yeah. I think we're okay. Okay, you want me to just stay here and talk? Okay. Yeah, please. Man. We would love, love you. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're that uncomfortable, I'm not going to hold you to it. But uh, you know, like okay, I said, we can yeah. hear you. The audience can hear you. So well, then I'm going to talk and walk. Okay, we can do that too. So this is a question on the table is from Samantha, and she would like to know what was the hardest challenge you have ever faced in filming, name, and you may draw from uh, any part of your career. I once uh, was in a TV movie where I played a fighter pilot. Uh, it was called Red Flag and was based on a real story that happened at uh, Air Force training where, where American planes uh, were fighting uh, Russian planes in these games. Yeah. And uh, I there was one scene where I had to walk out onto the tarmac, get into my jet, and I had dialogue on the ground and getting into the jet. But I had to time it with two jets taking off right behind me uh, on the, and so, uh, and they told me before we did the scene that if I screwed up, it would cost them about $10,000 every time the jets had to go up, turn around and then come back down again. Oh, wow. I was petrified because uh, of, of the challenges of having to. The pressure. the pressure of having jet planes behind you taking off just as you said a particular line. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. that's it. That's, that's that's right. I thought you were going to say just getting into the cockpit of a fighter plane because at your height, that couldn't have been an easy thing. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I went and I also once played a, a captain of a uh, of a submarine uh, in World War II, and I realized oh. once we got there that. I realized why people in submarines, you, there was a height limit. You had you couldn't be over six feet tall and be a person in a submarine. I was six four, and I kept on hitting my head on the oh. on the uh, top of the submarine. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Well, the hard, I, can't remember, I can't remember the film, but the hardest challenge I ever had was I Dan. They were Danny Aykroyd had been cast in this film. And he decided he didn't want to do it. And so they hired me. And they wanted me to be Danny Aykroyd. <laughs> I can't be Danny Aykroyd. How funny. I can be Meatloaf. I can not, I, but I don't play Meatloaf. I could be whatever that character was, but I'm not going to be Danny Aykroyd. He has a whole different thing. Yeah. Than me. That's the hardest challenge I ever had. Playing Danny Aykroyd as somebody else. Yeah, playing me, love playing Danny Aykroyd as Frank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I had a bad time in *A Hawk the Slayer*. Um, the opening scene, I was in uh, it was like in the back lot somewhere in Black Park or somewhere near Elstree, and I was um, tied up to a tree, 
and I was blind. I had the, the blind thing was a blind uh, piece of leather over my eyes. So I had yes. this over my eyes. I had these rags on and uh, tons of bones and things hanging from me. I was this old, it was called, actually my title, my name on the film was, uh, it began, it just said, uh, old woman. That was who I was. That was the name of my character. <laughs> and then they uh, dropped that to woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, well, that's, it. that's good. Anyway, so I was hanging by uh, up on this tree and, and they had a bonfire under me and Warren Clark, the actor, was saying, burn the hag, burn her. So they're going to set fire to me. And <gasps> the pouring rain all day and I'm hanging there with this blindfold on and, uh, I, and you know, I just wish they would burn me. <laughs> and the horse came by on a horse and went ping with an arrow and shot down the ropes and I was free. And I went home and I thought, I'm going to die if I stay in this movie. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did because again, I adore that film and we've spoken about it before. You, you said that that's your favorite, your son's favorite movies that you've done. So, Well, no, he's a little boy. He was quite proud of that, yeah. Yeah. So, and now, how about you? What was the biggest challenge? I suppose it, well, it was just a moment. It wasn't so much a challenge because my role was so small, but I was in the killing fields mm -hmm. and we were doing a scene. I was playing a journalist and there was a bunch of us. We were in Thailand pretending oh, to be yeah. real. And uh, in Vietnam and they had, you know, well, they weren't Black Hawks in those days, but those army helicopters. The Hueys. Leaning out with machine gun pointed at you and they were just above us and we had to be getting ready to leave the Saigon uh, American embassy off the roof and it was like the real thing it's it's funny but if you've got a helicopter an army helicopter so close to you the noise of the helicopter yeah. guys pointing machine guns and rifles at you and they I mean they were that was just to protect the Americans, but it was terrifying. Yes. I get a it little was, bit fun. It was supposed to have been the real thing, Nell. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I think I got I got into my role. Yes, darling. <laughs> <laughs> really, what what the helicopters again. It's wonderful movie. It's brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. And Samantha, thank you. That was a wonderful question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But ladies and gentlemen, any final words for our audience before we go backstage? Well, no, but I have final word for you. Can you leave the four of us on a screen for just a second without sure. anybody else listening so I can talk to the four of them? Yeah, we can do that. We, we might as well do that backstage. I think so. Okay. I think so. Can't do it while we're on here, but we can, we oh, yeah, can try we that backstage that for you. We did that backstage before. Yes, please. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. So thank you for like, tuning in, everybody. I yes, thank you, William. Thank you very much. It's been great. It's been wonderful. Yes, thank you, Patty. Very cool. And thanks Always. to everybody who asked the question. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Pat, Barry, meet yeah. uh, Nell. Thank you again for joining us uh, here at the Galaxy County Virtual Stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And as Meet said, thank you for those wonderful questions. And hi to my friend Doug. And hi to Tony, my two darlings. Doug Breyer and Tony, <laughs> very Italian. Until then, Tony too. <laughs> Until then, everyone, bye bye. Take care and please keep washing those hands. <laughs>